My Brilliant Career is a 1901 novel by the Australian author Miles Franklin. Franklin wasn't just an important author, but also a loyal citizen and a significant patron of our country's literary scene. Nowadays, the Miles Franklin Award is Australia's most prestigious literary prize. This review contains spoilers. Stella Maria Sarah Miles Franklin was born in 1879 into what's sometimes called the Squatocracy, a class of livestock farmers and wealthy landowners. She was a passionate feminist and spent a significant amount of time in America and Britain before settling in her home country in 1932. She died in 1954 at the age of 74. My Brilliant Career was her first novel. Astonishingly, she wrote it when she was just 16. It tells the story of a young Australian woman called Sibylla Melvin from a first-person perspective. Unfortunately for its author, it also reads like a fictionalised autobiography. I say unfortunately because when it first appeared, many of Franklin's friends and neighbours read not very flattering representations of themselves into the text, and they weren't pleased. Such was the hostility that Franklin cancelled the second printing and forbade the book's republication until after her death. How far was Franklin herself to blame? Well, it may be that she wasn't entirely innocent. A 1946 My Career Goes Bung, intended as the sequel to My Brilliant Career, was written in 1904, but she couldn't find a publisher, partly because it was so full of thinly veiled attacks on the literary and artistic bigwigs of the day. If that makes it sound like Miles Franklin had a nasty streak, she almost certainly didn't. Sibylla Melvin, my brilliant career's protagonist, probably was a self-portrait. Strange, weird and perverse, too outspoken to be engaging, is how the character unfairly describes herself. In fact, she is engaging, incredibly so. The chapter headings give some idea of the book's tone. Chapter 8, Possum Gully Left Behind, Hurrah, Hurrah. Chapter 31, Mr. Muswat and I Have a Bus Stop. And Chapter 11, simply entitled Yar. However, if that gives the impression that the writing's mediocre or overexcitable, it isn't. The author's especially good at evoking changing landscapes, but she also has a very good ear for dialogue, and all the characters are well-defined and fully believable. So what's it about? A squatter family falls on hard times, and its eldest daughter is sent to live with her wealthy grandmother on a ranch in the countryside. Despite being considered plain, she attracts the attention of several well-to-do young men, one of whom, Harold Beecham, falls deeply in love with her, and, apparently seriously, offers to support all her ambitions if she'll only marry him. She declines, consciously plumping instead for a future of soul-destroyingly repetitive household labour. To some extent, it's that ending that's the problem. If I have one criticism, it's that I'm not sure the protagonist's final choice is fully consistent with her passionate desire expressed at every turn in the novel for autonomy. If she was choosing between wedlock and independence, her decision would make sense, but she isn't. She's choosing between marriage to a man who respects her on the one hand and a life of eternal drudgery on the other. I'm not sure I can envisage her, or indeed anyone, deliberately choosing the latter. Having said that, this is an outstanding novel. Most novels about adolescence tend to be written by fully mature adults who try hard to remember what adolescence was like. Alternatively, when they're penned by adolescents, for understandable reasons, they're often cliched. My Brilliant Career books both those trends. It's a shame the ending's so sad, but well, at least we can be grateful that it wasn't as autobiographical as its original readership assumed.